Welcome all chess players and none of the above. How upset are you when you lose chess games? How happy are you when you win against someone who you have never beaten before, but you have wanted to? Well, today I'm going to show you one correspondence chess game that I played against a 2000 rated player. That was my first ever correspondence chess game. And it was a chess.com yearly correspondence chess game championships in 2021. So the game starts with c4, d6. Now d6 is a rare move. It's the ninth most popular move, and I don't have any moves planned for it. Uh, but since I'm playing the English, which is a very good system, because you can play knight c3, g3, and bishop g2, knight f3 and castles, it's quite good because you have your moves planned ahead, pretty much. I play knight c3, plays e5, g3. Now he goes f5. Now this is reverse Sicilian after e5, because the normal Sicilian is e4 and c5, so this is reversed. Um, he plays f5. f5 is theory, but I had never seen this un uh, until this opponent. Now f5 is theory, but I have not seen it because I'm playing a higher rated player. So I play e4 here, which is already not the move, not the move ac uh, according to theory. Uh, opponent develops the knight. I play queen c2. To take back with the knight, he plays g6, making this very nice uh, Dutch defense uh, structure. In the du Dutch defense, you play f4 against d4. But here, I have not played d4 because he has played e5 already. So that's why black is already quite good here. I play b3, trying to develop the bishop here to fight against this diagonal. Bishop g7, bishop b2, you know, castles is incoming for black, but white here is lacking in development and not sure where the castle is. So after c5, I play knight d5, trying to get the knights off, except that I clearly did not calculate knight takes e4 because I blundered the pawn. Yeah, that's, that's sad. Here comes f3. <laughs> Here comes f3, trying to get the knight away. I mean, f3 is quite a weakening move. It's You cannot develop the knight to f3 anymore. I should recommend playing d3 because it's a center pawn. You know, trying to get your center pawns as quickly as possible. After f3, he goes back to f6, and he's up, he's up a pawn. Here is, the, here is how high-rated opponents beat lower-rated opponents by playing more accurate moves in the opening and in the middle game. Long castles, not rushing to take, just develop. Not rushing to castle as well, because he could castle long as well. I play f4, trying to develop the knight here and put some pressure against this. He plays knight to d4, attacking the queen. I chop that off, because now I play rookie one check. He should have taken with the c pawn. Now we allow the check, and the king cannot castle anymore. Well, life goes. Knight f3, going for knight g5. So, if knight g5 here is happening, then he's going to get in serious trouble as the knight goes in, and the rooks get in, pieces get in, you know. So he trades off and plays bishop f6 to stop knight g5. If he had played bishop d7, then knight g5, I'm going for this, and I'm going to get a uh, passed pawn. So, he played bishop f6. I played bishop b5, going for rook e8. You know, I expected bishop d7 here, and after takes, I will double up the rooks. But, uh, he played king g7, so I doubled up anyway. There is also h4. h4 here can go for king side play against this king now, but I decided to double rooks. Bishop d3, you know, we have one day to make all these moves, so it's, uh, you can have unlimited calculations here if you want, if you decide to. So, but this does not really work because 
black trades off the rooks himself. If I go h4, h5, there's no attack anymore. If I go knight g5, bishop takes. So I trade, and now, I mean, I don't want to really go rook e1 because it doesn't really do much. I mean, computer says it's it, that it's drawish, but you know, I decide to play king p1, useful move in in uh, games where you castle queen side, of course, king p1 to get off the c file. You know, this could be a very good pawn break at uh, any given moment. Bishop d7 and uh, rook c1, waiting, just waiting move. White really has here no way to get in without getting a bad structure. I already have a Pawn that cannot be protected here. After b5, I cannot play bishop c4. Queen b2. Yeah, queen of 7 and you can't defend this pawn. This is all over going to be. This is all going to be over in a very suffocating game. Suffocating middle game. I play rook e1, shuffling. Queen takes d5. Just playing on. Just playing on. Knight g5. Now I expected here that bishop takes because... This bishop cannot is blocked here, but he plays a very good move, which is c4. If uh, I go back, there is d3 attacking the queen. So after c4, I did not take the pawn as well because if I take, he takes and he threatens uh, rook b8. Uh, not right now, but the bishop is hanging. If I move it, this is going to be a very very bad position for. Him. Right, as these are going to be passed pawns. So, I decided to move it back to bishop c2. And if you're still here to watch how the biggest comeback occurred, I thank you. And here I calculated that there could be bishop f1, bishop e2, but the most realistic is bishop c2. As I looked at it and saw. No, no, d3 is an obvious double attack on the queen and the bishop. Oh, no. But I had prepared a nasty trap for it. I mean, I was still thinking that, okay, he would see that he would not play d3 because of my move after that. Yes, this would be losing, but I have a check. So he could play here, pawn takes pawn. He could play here queen g2, he could go in and trade off the rooks, simple, but he plays d3 and here he is checkmate in 10 for white, what in the, what in the world? But as I said, the queen and the bishop are attacked, what is the move here? Wait, how, how, how did the I see it but black did not, well because Black maybe did not look for white's checks. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? What is the move here? Rook to e7 check. Not hanging one piece, not two pieces, but the third piece. Because the bishop is overloaded and the bishop was too greedy. But it's overloaded and it gets nothing. Why is this mate? Because after king moves, the bishop is hanging and the mate cannot be stopped. The mate cannot be stopped. Now why is this mate in 8 still? It's because the bishop is hanging with check. And you don't have to take. It's not checkers. You don't have to take. If you take, you get into more checks. And the only move is king d1. Because you don't want to get checked and get drawn. And again, after you play king c1, there is another check, which is queen h1. Now you have to take, because if you don't, you get mated. So you have to take, and now after b c takes b3, calm yourselves down. You have not won the game yet. You have to play the accurate move and calculate. If you take on b3 with the king, you get drawn. You can't win this game. You may lose it. You may lose it. So hold your horses. And what is the move here? 
Calm King P2. Calm King P2, and there are no more checks. The line here is Queen C1 check, Rook D8 check, King D1, Rook C1 check, B2 check, and any move and it mate. So that's why it's made in five, but here black reside. And I win my first correspondence chess game against 2000. Now, there is a fun fact here. Since it was my first game, I started on ELO 800. My opponent, I'll show you another angle. My opponent was rated 20, 24 before playing me. And when he lost, he lost 324 points. 324 points in one game. Now, how many points did I get? From winning this game. Let's see. I got 444 points for winning my first game on Correspondence Chess Game in 2022 Chess.com Daily Chess Championship. Is this the highest amount of ELO gained in one chess game or not? If you like this video, make sure to check out some more and I thank you and see you.